call the meeting to order at 6.01 p.m. And we go to approval of the December 14th minutes. Any comments or additions or corrections? You certainly do a good job, Sheila. I try. Yeah. We um, we can double your pay, Sheila, for that. Okay. Oh, cool. <laughs> I know I can offer two times zero. Right? I might have to ask for a raise. I may not have a job soon. <laughs> Ooh. Um, okay. So anybody you want to make the motion to accept? Make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. So we will go to a vote, Jim? Aye. Sheila? Accept. Cynthia? Accept. I vote accept and Bob just joined us. Hi, Bob. Hi. Um, we, just, you guys... we, just, we just did the minutes okay. of the last can, meeting. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. This is, I'm working off of a new computer, so never sure. Nice and clear. Good, thank you. Okay. We will now, since we did the um, minutes just before you came, Bob, we accepted them. And uh, Sheila, you also sent another copy of the November 23rd minutes um, in, in your last email. So that was just, we voted acceptance of those at the end of the last meeting, but everyone now has a good clear copy of that, yes? Okay. All right. And so we're going to financial report, Jim. Okay. Well, we're exactly six months into our new fis this fiscal year, and um, we're falling a little bit behind. Um, half of the seventy-five thousand eight sixty is approximately thirty-eight thousand, and we've spent forty-one. So it, it, it's a challenge to manage on this level funding they give us every year. The only clear concern I have now is on maintenance and something we can't avoid. Um, we've spent $2,868 uh, out of a budget of 3,500, leaves us a balance of 631. So that's, that's got my attention. I'm, I'm a little concerned about that. Mm -hmm. uh, but the salaries are very close. Um, the, um, the electricity bill is, is amazingly lower than I anticipated. So there could be a surplus wow. there. I'm not sure why, but I'll take it. Yeah. Of course, with this temperatures that we've had today, those mini splits are working very, very hard to keep up. So, yeah. um, any, any questions on that? Oh, one thing I wanted to mention on the municipal budget at the bottom of the page, you'll see that the lift um, um, has a balance of 18,936. And as we, I think I mentioned this before, as we started this project, my goodness, three years ago, three plus years ago, Margo anticipated spending about $20,000 on uh, architectural fees. So they've spent 16 already. And I was hoping that they might hit the 20,000, that would leave us $15,000 surplus that we could apply to this project should it go over budget. So we'll just have to wait and see. Um, okay. Jim, is, is there something that you can point to that has caused us to use more than half of our budget? Is it, is it the maintenance line? Yeah, maintenance is, is over what we had anticipated. And what is, in, what is in that that drove that so much more? Because that's really not a lot of money annually. Yeah. Well, I, the, I can answer that for everybody. We had Andrea's landscaping come, and that was over a $700 bill when Andrea came to do landscaping. Each time Rich Strong came to do a mini school <laughs> repair, that was a service call. Um, for when they came each time we had the leak and for when they finally 
fixed it so that it would stop leaking behind the circulation desk. And those were our two biggest expenses out of maintenance for this year. Cindy, did Andrea come twice? She only came once. And for that one time, I believe it was about $775. I don't have the exact figure with me. I can look tomorrow in our rec my records and email out to everyone what the exact figure was for the one day that she came and did the landscaping for us. I will also point out that um, I know office supplies, we've always gone over on that. Something I didn't realize was a lot of the things that were coming, like things Matt or any of us were picking up at the local hardware store, if you will, at Leader, at the account. Um, those were all getting booked to office supplies and that really is indeed maintenance supplies. So um, I had said something to Cindy about that should be coming out of maintenance, not her office supplies, because we have a real small budget for that as well. well. And just so you're aware, there is still an account to pick things up. Matt is on it, but I guess when we need light bulbs or we need, you know, a Swiffer to clean that downstairs floor or paper towels, it, it's, it's not our janitor that's going in. It's Cindy sends me an email. I pick it up when I can. Um, I'll be honest. I try to stay away from our sales counter, but here again, um, he, he needs to be doing that. That's his goddamn job. Uh, just want to remind you that we're being recorded <laughs> for posterity. So, so those by golly, are, it's his job. <laughs> thank you. Those supplies should be booked under maintenance as opposed to office supplies. That's what you're saying. Yeah. And, I, and I agree with that. And that's going to be even higher with, thank God the town had a fund for, you know, the COVID supplies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Uh, any other <laughs> questions on the operating budget? No, you, uh, okay. we're going to make it. I think we're going to make it to June thirtieth. Cross your fingers. You know, every year at the end, we usually end up with a couple of three thousand surplus. So maybe we can be lucky again. We'll see. Wow. Okay. There's nothing we can. There's nothing we can do to to curtail it. We're not wasting any money. Right. Everything here is legitimate. Um, yeah. So the special revenue accounts really have not changed much from last month, only that we've, uh, we've got some more revenue, more interest on, on the investments. Um, so those numbers are very are closely resemble what we had last year. So our expendable monies right now is 43,170.77. That's, that's a very comfortable number to be at at this point in time. Good. I can also report that the DUDA fund has done very well since its um, inception in uh, 2018. Um, we are about to tap into it, but it has done very well. Thanks, That's really good news. To the tune of $69,000, well. Yeah. Mm. That's very good. Yes. Oh, okay. did we get the, is that with the fourth quarter earnings? Uh, it was uh, as of uh, yesterday when I went on the site. That was uh, the total. They must have posted good. That's that's. I'll tell you in a little while. That's going to change soon. <laughs> okay, we are now at. The, any other questions on the financial report? Okay, we move to director's report. Wait, did everyone have a chance to review over the report that I sent out last week? <laughs> A few more things have come up since I sent out my report. Um, of the 114 MailChimp um, uh, patrons who are signed up for MailChimp, we had a 93% open rate for our January newsletter. Last week, I attended via Zoom the Board of Health meeting because they were discussing updating protocols for town owned buildings. And I'm very happy to report that they are very happy with the library and how we are, are handling things. Um, so as long as we continue to do what we're doing, we'll be good. 
And of course, curbside is still an option for any patrons that don't yet feel comfortable with coming into the library. Um, <clears throat> at their last executive board meeting, the Mass Board of Library Commissioners voted to extend um, the reduced hours into FY23 reporting for our state aid report. So it's any time between December 1st and I believe April 31st that libraries could potentially have to reduce hours because of the new um, Omicron variant. It's not going to affect uh, eligibility for state aid. I guess everyone was hoping that by now it wouldn't have to be a, a concern, but it still is. Um, there's some old trustee meeting minutes and the trustee meeting handbook on a shelf in the office if anyone wants to figure out what to do with them that would be great so we can get the shelf cleared off before construction starts where cindy where is, where is that it's when you first walk into the office and you turn to the right where we we have shelves where we have holds but the three shelves above that one shelf is for friends and it has old friends information and two shelves have old trustee meeting minutes and trustee handbooks how old, how old are those minutes? Um, I believe they go back at least 10 years, some of them. Okay. They probably belong at the town offices. I'm not sure okay. how, I'm not sure how long, how far back minutes go, but I know we were supposed to be sending our finalized minutes to um, town office to be included in, in the records. So you might want to- I can check with town offices tomorrow. And then um, yesterday, I, two of our patrons slipped on the icy sidewalk down by where the town-owned sidewalk was. I did let the town know that it happened. I've checked with both of the patrons and they're fine, but I did take all of the information and report it to the town just in case anything came up. And I did go out and sand the heck out of the walk. So we're going to need more sand. Who's in charge? Cindy. I believe that would be Matt. If not, maybe Keith. If not, I can get sand if someone tells me where I can go get it. Well, I was gonna say, or I can grab some too. If sand, sand is available down at the town town yard. Two pages. As I recall, we've always had a bucket of sand right by that front door just for that sort of an emergency. Yeah. And that's what I used yesterday to sand. It was the entire length of the walk uh, from the, that stretches all the way straight down to the sidewalk. Yeah. Well, and who's that was what I sanded. Who's in charge of, of sanding that sidewalk? I, I, isn't that part of the town crew's job? I thought they it was, stand I mean, up there. they came, the, the, the driveway was plowed and salted when I got there. And then the walk from the driveway to the steps were all taken care of. It was just the length of the walk um, that if you went straight down, that would take you to the town sidewalk that wasn't done. And that was where the issue was at the very end of the sidewalk where it connects with the town sidewalk. You're talking about the sidewalk going out to the street or to the parking yes. lot? Yes, out to the street. Out to the street, okay. And that's where both of our patrons slipped yesterday. Okay. Very close to the actual, where it actually meets with the town sidewalk. Yeah. Um, it was wet underneath with a coating, just a dusting <clears throat> of snow. Um, I happened to see one of them go down and it happened to be Neil. So I stopped very quickly and he was getting up and I made sure he was okay. Um, it was just the wet sidewalk underneath the dusting. Um, is that, do we send Matt to get the buckets of sand? Does he do that? I, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know either. Is the bucket by the front door right now? It is, and it's about maybe a quarter of the sand left in there because I wanted to make sure it was good and sanded. I, I'll fill that up for you tomorrow. All right, thank you. Okay. Jim, I can. Now, now the sidewalk going it. from the front door to the street, um, 
I'm not sure who's responsible for say, for assaulting that one. But um, Jim, I gotta I gotta run out tomorrow morning. I'm gonna be going right past the the DPW down there. I can pick up. I got a couple of five gallon buckets. I'll pick up two or three more. Okay. Oh, Bob, just, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, and then if Keith is around, I'll just check in with him and ask that question as nicely as yeah. I can, okay. not being accusatory, <clears throat> but by the same token, two people who were using the library slipped and fell. And this was a very tough storm to, to manage with yeah. the snow, yeah. then the ice, then the snow back again, and then the ice. And you'd get it done, and you know, a few hours later, it's slippery again. Yeah, very difficult. Okay. Okay. So so you, you open you open at eleven tomorrow, right? Yes. Okay, it will be there. Um, yeah. by then. So, owner owner by then. Okay. okay. Megan, hello. I'm sorry, I didn't even see the flash on my screen to let you in. It's okay. You, you look like you're. I was waiting truck. patiently. I just didn't want to go get my phone because I knew Rafa would be like, "Mama, Mama." mama. <laughs> After a like while, you, I was like, "I'll like go get my phone and text somebody to let me in." <laughs> are, are you in the tropics? Because your background is so tropical. I know. I just want to feel like I'm in the tropics okay. today. So, so you're worried. It's a lot warmer where you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Cindy. Cindy, keep going. Whatever else you need. Um, the only other thing was the budget. Did everyone get a chance to review the two budget? I am talking right now. I am almost done. To review the two different, um, I sent out two versions of the budget. The first one was not level funding. It was entering in the numbers of what we actually spent last year on each in each line item. And then the second one that I sent out was level funding everything. When you factor out the formula that MBLC has to determine to make you eligible for state aid, we need to be at $76,968. If we go with version one of the budget, it puts us at $77,224, which is an increase from level funding. If we go with budget number two, which is level funding everything, it puts us at $76,010. But then if you factor in the cost of living adjustments that we would get for the beginning of the fiscal year, it would put us at $77,099. So we would have a little bit of wiggle room about, but not much. Well, I'm about to throw in a wrench because um, Cindy, we, you can um, contact Brian because we need to include in our budget um, the uh, cost for a fire monitoring system, uh, which we had a meeting on today. And I'm sure Jim will talk about that in a few minutes. But Brian can give you the um, the cost that you can factor in, and he said uh, to us this morning to add that as a line item in our budget. Um, and it's just, I mean, it's something that we hope the finance committee understands is way beyond our control because we can't really complete the project until the fire monitoring system is in place. So we have to be ready to pay for that. So do you think you can contact him tomorrow and add that? I, so I will contact Brian tomorrow to get that added into the line item. And as soon as I have that, I will email the budget back out to everyone so that we can hopefully get it voted on because I need to submit it by January 21st. Okay. Okay. And um, there, there have been changes on the finance committee in terms of personnel. So it could be a different kind of um, presentation atmosphere this year. Is there anything else that you uh, wanted to discuss, Cindy? Well, there's a few other things, but it's they're later on on the agenda. Okay, so that we'll, we'll get to them later on on the agenda then. Okay, sounds anybody good. Have, anybody have any questions for Cindy in terms of the report? 
Okay, then we're on to old business. Jim. Wait, I did have one quick question oh, about okay. the performance agreement. Um, yes. The only thing I was going to ask about is, so it does say something in there about um, not fundraising for the event should not be part of the program by the performers. Um, and I guess maybe this is more of a question for the friends, but you know, like I know it often helps them when TJ and the peepers would encourage people to donate. And so I didn't know how that line could be interpreted in that performance agreement. Okay, I hadn't even thought of that um, because I was just um, using temp, I was just trying to form, formulate one for us from Greenfield and Sunderland who had sent me copies of what theirs looked like. And so we could always just eliminate that piece out of it. I don't know. It's just something I thought I would, like I said, and maybe that's something to loop the friends in on. Um, like I said, that was just something I thought, that, you know, like if they stay up there and say, oh, you know, donate, you know, to the library or donate, you know, to the group, you know, that I feel like that line could be interpreted differently. You know, the performer might think that they can't do that. <laughs> is, is the, um, is that line meant so that the performer, him or herself, doesn't um, make a profit from the audience for themselves. Cindy? That's yeah. that is how it's supposed to be interpreted. That they can't be fundraising or saying, "Okay, we're having this concert. It's X amount of dollars per ticket because you know charging an admission fee." Right. Right. Yeah, okay. like I said, I get the point of it. I just, I felt like that could be, you know, like I just kind of wondered if that would make some performer think like, ooh, maybe I can't stand up there and say anything, you know? I just thought I'd mention it, something to think about. Do you do you want to work with Cindy on sharpening that language and making it less ambiguous in that sure. little piece there? Okay, Yes, great. please, yeah. Megan, will you work with me on sharpening yeah. it? Yeah, no problem. Thank okay. you. Appreciate that. All right. I do too. Anything else? Anything else? All right, uh, Jim, update on ADA compliance project. Okay, I can probably cover the first three or four items on your agenda. Um, the ADA compliance project is moving along very rapidly right now. Um, today, we had a meeting um, to discuss a couple of issues. Um, one was the, um, the fire alarm system. And it's something Bob Klinger has been working on. Um, so we had the full contingent. We had the architects, we had um, the electrician, and we had uh, a gentleman who would do the fire alarm system. We had the fire chief there, uh, Bob Smith and Bob Klinger and myself also in attendance. So we're trying to work out, and I think we've come to the conclusion of where these fire monitors will be located. There will be a central station in the foyer. Um, uh, there will be... Um, a horn announcement of any fire and should, um, that'll be a hardwired horn. It should cover the whole building, they're very loud. Um, but all of the devices are going to be Bluetooth, which eliminates all the hard wiring and it's, that would really cut the expenses tremendously. And then we also talked about who's gonna monitor it. And we just discussed that with uh, Cindy about the, uh, on the budget and, um, we can get onto the town system. Uh, it will, there will be a fee involved and we'll, Brian said to just add it into our, um, our, our budget. Um, so that's, that's where the fire alarm system is. It's all to code. Everybody agreed, the architects, John Hannum um, and the installer. So it was a good meeting. I think we've, we've covered just about everything. Uh, Bob Klinger, do you have anything to add to this? Uh, no, we did. After the meeting, Jim and I uh, moved a couple of things around like the computer carols on the first floor, just to try to try to clear some room. Um, and then we plastic plastic put some plastic sheeting um, down in, on the first floor in the basement uh, over some of the the books, because there is going to be some dust and we were just trying to 
minimize that the impact of that as much as possible but it's getting ready to start so that's a good thing yeah uh you've got a line on it on the bardwell room that is completely cleaned out now and it's it's available for our use and in fact we have put a few things in there already so could we take the shelving from the storage side on the north those ones that still have wendy's arts and crafts and move a couple of those in there for matt so he we, can condense his stuff we certainly could sheila but i i would hesitate to doing it right now i'd rather have the construction project over with because they'll be storing tools and equipment in that room and we don't want to we don't uh, want to yeah because we, we once we it's offer, done i think that's a good idea we could yeah. put some shelving in there for him we offered to the contractor at the last meeting that he could use that space to store tools so yeah. the barn will temporarily yeah. be at um, space for him to use. Excuse me. So I have a meeting on Thursday with a um, gentleman from Keras Oil um, regarding the drain um, on the baseboard hot water system um, that was interfering with the removal of that sink. So I think we've come to a solution, but I'll formalize it with, with, um, with Chet on Thursday. I think we can move ahead on getting rid of that sink because the plumbing just won't work when we add another sink on the opposite side of that wall. So a little technicality, I think we can solve it. Is the fire alarm system part of this bid project? Yes. Yes, it is. And it was what? not originally, Sheila, I must add, it was not originally part of it, but Bob Klinger had pointed out, and he's absolutely correct, that we're one of the only town buildings that does not have a fire yeah. alarm system. And that's, that's our fault. So well, and there is, there is a little discrepancy because at the top of the lift shaft, at the top of the elevator shaft by code, it's required that you have a smoke detector and that smoke detector be monitored. And so that, I don't want to point fingers, but I don't think that got, picked up on uh, right. until the that first meeting with the contract that we had on site for the contractors to take a look at it. Um, and so then that's why we started talking to John Hannum. That's why we had the meeting today. We did have them set aside. How much was set aside in the bid process? Uh, or, how much? I'm not sure if, what that line item is, Bob. I don't have There that. was a set aside by the architect. Oh, yes, um, yes. After the fact, she did that, yeah. Yeah, that was stipulated. So everybody would be working from the same yeah. um, piece of information. Yeah. And I can't remember if it was $3,500 or $5,000, um, how much was set aside as part of the, part of the bid, but there was yeah. money set aside. Um, the hope is that if the town covers the monitoring, since it is their building, um, and we pay for the smoke detectors and the, the uh, what you call it station, right as you walk in as part of this project, we can cover that with the set aside. So that's, that's what we're trying to do. So we'll, we need to see what the numbers come back. Um, so that, that is as far as I have information I have on the, on the construction. Do any questions for, from the group on where we are, where we're going? Okay. Okay. Um, uh, training of new library associates, Cindy, you got any comments on that? Ashley is doing a great job. She's very, she's starting to become very comfortable and getting to know our patrons and I am slowly teaching her all of the administrative aspects of library work. Okay. Keep us updated on that because that's really important in these times. Okay. Yes. All right. Especially I since so many of my fellow colleagues are reporting in that their staff are dropping like flies. Well, I saw on um, the um, Tilton Library's Facebook page this evening that they have a new policy that patrons have to sign in upon entry 
and um, they have timed visits and um, only X number are allowed um, at any given time. Otherwise they have to wait uh, outside or, or whatever. So um, you're right. doing a good job. You're doing a good job. If the board of health is happy with you, that's They're a good sign. They're very happy with what we're doing. That's a good sign. That's yeah. very good. Thank okay. You. Yep. Um, and we update on the budget process. We've already talked about that. Let me just say one thing regarding the Duda fund. <clears throat> I was, I was kind of hoping that um, I, I wouldn't have to ask for any of that money to be transferred out of the fund for a little while. I figured that, you know, with 75,000 from the town, that that ought to last a while. Our town accountant um, will not sign the contract for construction until the money from the Duda fund is in hand. So I applied for the money yesterday. Um, I called the foundation and she walked me through the application, which took all of 25 seconds to complete. And uh, I've arranged to transfer 75,000 from the Duda fund into um, the coffers of the town of Waitley so that the um, accountant is satisfied and everything will be signed and everything can move, move forward from that. I guess the, the object there is to not start the project knowing that it's going to be nearly 150,000. You gotta have that in hand before it starts rather than wonder if you're going to be able to pay beyond the 75,000 that the town gave. So that's why they, they, we had this long string of emails to discuss this and, and um, it was a very simple process and the foundation meets on Friday and uh, we should have our money um, early next week in the, um, for the town of Waitley. Great, thank you. Okay. And even with that amount taken out, we'll just be a little bit shy of what the original grant money was, because yeah. we've done, uh, they've done such a good job investing um, that money, so. That's positive. Yep. Okay. Um, and Bob, Jim and Bob, what did you think of um, Josh from Diversified? Oh, he seems like a guy that we can work with. Mm -hmm. so. yep. And he had, he had his. He had his superintendent on site today, the, the man who will be the superintendent for this project. Um, and he's, you know, been to both meetings. Aviva, I think, is is on top of it. And George Dole from um, uh, Jones Witsit yeah. is going to be um, working on the project as well. So there was good representation. I have a good feeling about yeah. um, moving forward. I think there's good, good communication. We've already... Um, you know, uh, Josh has, has set up a communication list and sent that out to us and updated it once already. Um, so those are, I think it's positive. That's just my opinion. Yeah. No, it's I'd, just, it's good to hear for uh, the official kickoff. Yeah, Aviva took some very good notes on our first meeting and she published that and uh, boy, she's on top of every little item. There was another thing that we discussed this morning and that was uh, possible asbestos in the flooring of the two utility closets. You know, the tiles that you see in the in the, the stack room, and those tiles were used to be all over the, uh, the library. Um, so he, the guy was there and he tested it. And when he did the scrapings, it very possible it's not present. And I'm a little surprised at that, but uh, it'd be nice if that was not a hot item. Yeah. Yeah. So rest assured, yep, rest assured that Jim and Bob um, Klinger are doing a great job as our clerks, um, they're all over this. So um, we're in good hands. And, and my my take, I'd agree with, with what you guys said about Josh. Um, I like him, I think we can work with him. I like the subs that I've met and heard. Um, they ask good questions. So they're, they're clearly knowledgeable. Um, they wanna do it, you know, it's, I'm, I've been very happy. So I think it's, it's also a good start. Okay. Um, so is there any other old business that you wish to discuss? If not, we move on to um, discussion of the payment process for the lift project. I don't remember if last month we talked about that in any detail, but we, I contacted Brian Domina and what will happen is the contractor will bill send the bill to the architect who will fill out an AIA form 
um, bill, which has the, the, the um, schedule of the construction and what percentage of each piece of the construction is completed. That will go to Brian Domina with a copy to me and to Jim Ross so that Brian, if he has any questions about where we stand on a certain part of the payment or whatever, um, he can ask. Um, and it keeps Cindy from having to worry about it in any way, shape or form, um, because those bills can come fast and furious and there'll be little chunky ones, sometimes real big ones, but um, sometimes little ones. So um, I think that's, it's a good streamlined process. And that was uh, on Brian's request. Okay. Do you have any questions on that? Cindy, sure. you're, you're doing that, right? I'm good with that, but should the library at least be getting a copy so there's something in the library's records in case anyone ever has a question down the road of who did what and when? Um, I'll ask Brian Dom and I'll call Brian and ask him. Um, okay. if that, um, I'd be happy to give the library my copies when the project is over. That's... Um, that's fine. I just I don't know record keeping wise. Well, the town what we're what we're supposed to keep, well, if anything. The, the town will obviously have this on record because okay. the bills are sent to the town of Waitley. So, um, All right. I think you mean about historically for the library's purposes. Yeah, let me run that by Brian and 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 see. I just didn't want to, you know, to to right. uh, see everyone in the universe about this so um I, I'll, I'll just okay. ask Brian. okay oh, and did, did you point. get the email that I forwarded you, you this afternoon from the recorder from Chris at the recorder yep okay I did I don't know what you want to do about that um I wasn't sure so that's why I forwarded it to you okay well the the, the recorder may want to do an article um on the construction project um, I don't know how you all feel about that. I would say um, we should let Jim and Bob be our spokespeople because they're our clerks. Um, and if the if he, they contact you again, Cindy, I guess, but I'd love to hear from Jim and Bob whether they want to talk to the paper or not, or should we wait a little while till we actually get off the ground? I, I certainly don't mind, but Bob, I think you'd be a better spokesman. I'm happy to talk to them. It, what little experience I have in areas like this, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm open to suggestion, isn't it better to do sort of a wrap up once the project's done? That's rather what than I it, would think. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, his, the, the email was, uh, their thinking was that it was, would be kind of cool to, to report that this kind of thing is happening in the COVID era that we're you know, moving forward with fixing things and making things. So I can contact that person if you want, Jim. I can contact that um, person at the recorder. I'll wait till next week. Um, oh, wait. Okay, is that all right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy to, I mean, if they want to talk to somebody, I mean, maybe it would be better. Maybe you could suggest, um, hopefully COVID's better in the future and I'd be happy to give them a tour once everything's done and show them the upgrades to the library and wow, isn't this fantastic. Okay, well, we're certainly, uh, I mean, I'm hoping that we're gonna have a big, uh, when it's all constructed, that we're gonna have a big day at the library. Exactly. That would be great. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How are, um, do we have a feeling on the actual lift itself, the components and the lift? I mean, is that available? We do not know. Uh, that is the one piece that is farthest out. Uh, and I think it was uh, two weeks ago, it was eight weeks out, yes? Yeah, um, right. I don't think that, I think they're gonna, they're gonna start with the reconstruction of the um, bathrooms, but I think that they're gonna want to know that that lift is closer rather than farther away before they start blasting stuff apart. Oh. Well, and it was the eight week number was what Josh was told when he got his numbers as he was submitting the bid. 
So okay. it's a few months old, but it's not seven or eight months old that it's eight weeks out. So obviously things change quickly nowadays, but hopefully it's eight weeks or, okay. or very close. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions regarding that? Okay. Um, Cindy, you want to talk about the custodian's requests? Okay, so Matt and I had a conversation a couple of weeks ago um, regarding cleaning out the Bardwell room. If we're doing construction, he wants to know how clean does the room need to be now? I'm guessing that since the construction people are going to be storing their tools in there, we want it as clean as we can get it. And then I'm he's... I was in the room today and I think it's fine just the way it is for now. Okay. I will let him now know. And then he was also asking for a good particle mask with a replaceable filter for when he has to work in there because the red dust from the brick on the walls was getting into the air causing him to start to have some respiratory issues and I guess it also led to an eye infection. This is what was reported to me. Um, there's, there's plaster in that room. That's what I thought. There's, there's been no red brick disturbed. I don't. I don't understand that. The room, the room is, pla is, is plaster and yellow paint. Yes. Yeah. And the floor is concrete like the other side, correct? Yeah. With a rug yeah. on it. But there's yeah. still a rug on it. Yeah. All right. I will let him know that we discussed this at our meeting and that the room is clean for now. It's clean enough. And please, I don't know, put your supplies in there as you can. And that there really is, there is no red dust. No. You know, this is not the first time we've been reported to didn't he also say something about the mold downstairs affected him? And, and yes, where is that he getting was, this from? I don't know. That was before I was director and he was asked to clean the bathrooms by Wendy. We need to be careful. We need a, we need we need a janitor the janitors. Um, w once again, in consultation with Brian, um, uh, simply uh, in terms of, of any employee, just as we evaluate Cindy, et cetera, um, we need to keep a, a, um, uh, a written record of these kinds of interactions where the requests like this are made or um, not outright ref refusal, but a concern about doing a, something that was assigned by the director. Just keep a record of when these things occur and have, what, the, what the outcome is. Yes, I have it. That's an important thing to do. Right. So I have the notes from that conversation written down. And there was another conversation that he and I had about cleaning up the upstairs closet. And so he did... Um, grumbly clean out the upstairs closet but then I noticed that there's still some stuff if you open the cabinets underneath there's still some things in the cabinets underneath that need to be moved and that I have that one written down as well so okay. I do have a notebook where I am keeping okay notes okay. yeah I uh, guess I guess my concern is um The respiratory, I, I think I'm remembering mm -hmm. how it was described, the respiratory distress and the eye infection. Isn't that what it was? Yes, that it, by working in the Bardwell room without a special construction mask with a filter, it was causing him, even though he was masked, it was causing him to have some respiratory issues and some of the dust got up into 
his eyes causing one of his eyes to have some irritation to um or infection and he did buy a pair of safety goggles that he did start wearing but he pretty much stopped cleaning in that room until he knew whether or not he was going to be able to get the special mask with the filter what does the special mask with the filter cost? Did you look on Amazon or anything to find out? You can get them at Hampshire Lumber for $5. Can you get them at um, Sheila's place for $5? Yeah. 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 Sure. yeah. Okay. So um, why, don't, why don't we do that? And yeah. make sure okay. that Send him in to pick it up. He's, up. he's on the authorized list. Okay, I will let, let him know he can do that. Okay, great. Anything else? All right. Um, so the, not yep. regarding that. Okay, so the next item was Waitley's 250th. That was, I think you asked me to put that on there. So. Yes, because I'm very excited about this. On Monday, June 20th, is the night that the bench is going to be dedicated to the town, the, the stone bench with the panoramic view. So the library is hosting a concert that night with the Bad News Jazz Band. And I'm working with Susan Barron and Joyce Palmer Fortune. They also want to dig up the time capsule that's there and bury the new time capsule that night as well. So I'm working with them um, as well on trying to find something that the library can add into the time capsule. I know that Ina Kane had written a letter for her predecessor 50 years from 1971. So I'm hoping to do the same thing, write a letter to my predecessor in 50 years, whomever that may be. Um, so I'm really excited about that. I'm trying to make the library become, I want, it's probably idealistic and Pollyanna of me, but that's fine. When Ina Kane was the librarian, the library was the cent was part of the center of the community. And my goal is to try to bring the library back to being a center of the community, whatever form that's going to look like now, whether it's more online resources and things like that, or just trying to get patrons once things have settled down again, getting patrons interested in coming back into the library. Uh, Cindy, um, number one, I'm, I'm, I really admire your excitement. Number two, don't ever forget that you, you got to be uh, the director of the library during the COVID era. Mm. Yes. There's, no, there's nothing like that since the Spanish flu in 1918, 19. Um, and that has skewered your efforts in a lot of ways, yeah. but you've you've done a very good job of trying to keep the ship afloat. Um, and that was so one of that was sort of the part of how I wanted to write a letter to my predecessor that fifty years ago we had a pandemic that we hadn't seen the likes of since the Spanish flu, and this is how it sort of transformed our library and our services we were able to offer our patrons at the time. But I'm not going to give up. Okay. Very, nice. Very good. Was there anything else about the 250th yeah. that you wanted? Yeah, that, that June 20th date, uh, it, what's its relationship to the, <clears throat> excuse me, the, uh, the parade is the following Sunday? The parade is the following Sunday, the 26th. The Saturday, the 25th at Hurley, Hurley he Field is Family Fun Day. Friday night, the 24th, they're actually letting off fireworks at the library. But that's, I believe, Sarah Cooper and John Hannon are in charge of that. Yes, there's been that's a flurry of, of emails back and forth. And that's uh, on the 24th. They're doing fireworks on yeah. Friday night, the 24th. They're doing fireworks. Okay. And I, I am the MC of the parade. Are you? <laughs> really? yeah. Oh, yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> Jack and I plan on representing the library in the parade. I don't know yet what we'll be doing, but we will be representing the library in the parade. Sorry, when is the parade? Uh, Sunday, the 26th of June. Okay, is it the so the following week. Yeah. Um, the only thing I will mention, I don't know, um, is the library going to be open on 
June 20th. I guess that might not matter for the donation yes, of the a, bench. It's a but... Monday. So yeah, we... but it's Juneteenth Monday. So ah, uh, yeah, right. Oh, um, the holiday. So just thought I'd mention that. Has that been officially declared a legal holiday yet in Massachusetts? Yes. yes, I believe so. Yes. Well, if we're closed that day, we can just be there for the concert. Okay. Wow. Okay. I'm okay. glad we're involved. Yeah, that's very good. Okay, Cindy, great. Um, Board of Health updates you, you already gave us. We are yeah. to continue the way we're, we're, we're going. Yes, the only other, the only real change they made was um, besides the showing proof of vaccination is if you're not vaccinated, a negative test within 24 hours of attending an event. And that Run was really the, the only difference. What was that again? Instead of, um, it used to be 72 hours negative te COVID test within 72 hours, but now they're requesting it be within 24. And that's okay. the only change that they made. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> there is uh, one other item that I just wanted to bring to your attention. <clears throat> um, I started to have a discussion with Brian Domina this morning uh, about thinking about the library's uh, future into the middle and of the 21st century and beyond. I think that it's becoming clearer and clearer that space physical space is an issue. And that at some point, someone's going to have to, um, to go out there and say, we need to add on to the library. And he was very receptive about talking more about it and beginning to plan a way um, forward in terms of, of um, constructing an addition to the library. Um, Obviously, it's it, that's a ways out, but mm -hmm. with your permission, I'd like to continue discussions um, with him regarding that um, and to um, begin to have sort of a, a long range plan for that thing. Folks, the collection is our library and yeah. to make it fully um, accessible, part of the collection needs a new home, literally, um, and we just don't have the physical space. So I just um, wanted to float that out there. And if you would allow me, I can continue to, to um, talk with Brian and um, present in the future some ideas about ways we can. He thought that um, historic preservation uh, money coming from CPC would be completely appropriate for such a thing because any addition to this building has to be uh, historically and architecturally in line with what exists. So what are your thoughts? I totally agree that we are outgrowing that building and Cindy has been telling us this right along. Um, it may lead to one of her goals, which is to kind of revert back into being a community center. But I, I, I do agree that, you know, growing we're definitely growing out of that building. Mm -hmm. And we have to, you know, we would have to consider all of the, you know, the view and the backyard and, you know, yeah. we need a wise architect, um, but this is, that's a little farther down the road, but you don't mind then if um, I continue to talk with Brian and, and yes, Bob. I don't mind. I've been thinking about it because I overheard part of that conversation and you and I talked offline after the meeting today um, or at the tail end of the meeting. I guess the only question, and, and if this is sacrosanct as the, as the new person to the trustees and as a relatively new resident of the town, although I've owned land in the town for a while, um, is there any reason we wouldn't look at the center school? Uh -huh. Mold issues. Yeah, well, that is one. It, the whole building basically has to be gutted 
from my understanding, it's it's a it's not a teardown because you got to keep the facade. Um, but there's two floors. If it and I don't know what would be involved with the conversation you had with Brian today and money's available. That to me would be as important because sometimes monies can't be used. They have to be used in a certain way for certain. So um, I, I don't know. And then I don't know what you do with the library if you move it. But when I look at those two buildings, it feels to me like the town ought to hold on to both of them. And I was part of the, the group that was looking at the, the center school and what could be done. There were some great ideas. Um, and I'd love to have a coffee shop in town. Mm -hmm. I just don't think there's enough traffic to support it. I don't think there'd be enough customers or, you know, an open space. I, there were all kinds of great ideas floated about the center school. Um, is there any more space to that than there is our current library? Do you think? I think so. I don't have the exact numbers, but I think there is. Hmm. I mean, I'd, I mean, I'd be happy to dig into it further with you, Bob, because I think this, I, I, I agree with you. I, but I don't want to push people because I, I don't know. I mean, the library is very unique in its architecture and its shape and its everything. So does it make more sense to continue on with that style in that spot mm. and the center school becomes whatever the center school becomes? Yeah. I think our building now is a pretty unique structure in our town. You know, it's a beautiful looking building. It offers a view that center school doesn't, yeah. doesn't offer. Right. That's a big draw. Um, so that's, that's true. Just, that's just my feeling. Part of I was I was also you know in the in the dreamscape of all of this. Uh, I have been to um, museums and places uh, around the world that um, a part of part of the building is underground, so you wouldn't disturb the view or the architectural look. If and you could still do amazing things with getting light in from the outside, even if it were underground. So, anyways, I'm just. Uh, there are lots of lots of possibilities. I don't think that that the library would ever want to abandon the S. Y. Dickinson site, um, right. and I don't think the town would would ever oh. even want that to happen. Oh, then I just I having been having been part of the meetings on the center school reuse, and then that really got hammered with COVID, um, and being part of this, I just wanted to mention it sure and i understand i can understand it keeping both of them separate i get that so i mean my thought too is i mean we are investing you know one hundred and fifty thousand dollars into our current library right now right if that's how we look at this lift project right so it would be i don't know what the quick what what the right word is but you know, I feel like it would be unfortunate if we invested this time and money into that. And then not that, not that we would move anytime soon, but, um, and I do agree that we probably, I guess, you know, I do realize that there is always a need for more space, but I mean, overall, our library is never chock full, right? And other than certain concerts and things like that, like how much tra average traffic are we getting in a day when we're open? You know, I understand the idea of wanting it to be more of a community center, um, but I guess in what way do you all feel we have outgrown the space? Just need more space for books or? Not an immediate problem sort of equally we have to spend 20 percent of our municipal budget and that budget has to increase 
two and a half or whatever it is annually. But that also means that whatever she's bringing in, um, an almost equal amount has to go out just to keep the current collection there. She has a little room to move right now um, because she did some massive calling. Uh, but, you know, I don't I know. I mean, we could potentially see if we could work with the town too on that. Like if there is a different way to catalog, well, like maybe all the books don't have to be on display for browsing, mm -hmm. but you could have more books, just not have them necessarily there. You know what I mean? On site, or maybe they're in the basement, or maybe they're in a different facility somewhere in town that you know, it might, you might have to put in a request and it may take a day or two. So that's, I don't know. I'm just throwing ideas out there. Yeah, we do have the downstairs room. We had always said it was underused, the community room, but I mean, that isn't yet another option once we have the lift. So. Okay, well, just, um, we can keep talking about this. I, I, yeah. I will... I'll I think it's a good idea. And like you said, I think it's going to be a long process anyway. So why not start talking about yeah, it? Long range. Um, yeah. <laughs> but and I, like I said, I just great I guess, want to understand it a little bit more. Yeah. Great point. And I think if we if we get moving on this sooner, not saying anything will happen, um, but the sense is there's a lot of money flowing from the federal government to the state. And this mm. may be an opportunity in the upcoming years to tap into that if if we're going to do something i don't think anything's going to be this is i don't see this as being a quick project no but no do but you if, need a vote bob i wasn't sure i am well, happy we, for you to continue okay that well, why don't we comment. why don't you all mull this over for the next month um and at the next meeting um if you wanted to uh, we could form um an exploratory committee or something like that, just to 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 do work under the aegis of the uh, you know of the board, and then if if you want to, but think it over for a month. Um, I don't think we got enough on our plate for what's coming forward with the lift project right now. So I, I'm happy to wait and have casual conversations with all of you and with others. Um, Megan, I like your idea about that um, offsite. Um, thing and the, the real thing for me is that we really aren't going to be fully accessible even after the lift is there because of the way the stacks are in the north wing and to make that fully ex accessible means really the movement of what 25 to 30 percent of our collection where's it going to go you know so we keep kicking the the completely ada compliant can down the road Eventually, we're going to have to, um, you know, confront it. So that's all I was asking. Give it some thought. We'll talk about it in a month. It looks like the next meeting would be the day after Valentine's Day, the fifteenth of um, um, just February. a gentle rem yep. just a gentle reminder. Um, Amy Schrader had sent out the fact that people should be sending in their M one hundred two or M one hundred two dash zero paperwork because we are. Uh, elected town officials. Yeah, the it, campaign funds. Right. All you have to do is just, if you have the time to go down to the town office and just ask her and they have a sheet that sort of takes care of everybody's, um, everybody who wants to put their name on that and sign off that they didn't use funds for uh, election. Um, so it's, it's very simple thing. It takes two seconds to make the signature there. Um, and she has that available because I already went and did mine. I don't know if the rest of you have done that yet. It's due on the 20th. The 20th of January? Correct. Okay. Thanks, Cynthia. So we got to get, and Sorry. Megan, you, you, your, your term and my term are both up this year. So if you plan on continuing, keep watch on when you have to do your um, nomination papers. Okay. Bob, I have one more thing before we yes, adjourn. Sure. Um, this morning when we had that meeting, uh, I was unaware that the capital budgeting uh, for the capital improvement monies had a deadline. Uh, I think it was yesterday. And we had talked about, or I have talked about replacing that fire door. Uh, we talked about that.